Hey everyone, and welcome to the seventh episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna look at grouping your media effects, how to assign light effects to a specific button, and how to filter notes by the button index and the color. Here, I've created a very simple light effect. The technique I'll be showing you today, which is called grouping, is gonna allow us to keep this effect somewhere on the left side and assign a different effect on the right side. For example, say you would like a green effect on the right side, maybe you'd want it to go by rows instead of columns. To achieve this effect, we use a media effect track. You can either drag a media effect track from the list of devices, or you can select your light effect chain and then hit Ctrl G to group them into a media effect track automatically. Now you wanna make sure your media effect track is expanded so you can see the list of chains. And you also wanna make sure that you can see the key zones here. This list here displays all of the light effect chains we have available. So one of these chains is now what was previously laid out for the entire chain of the track. If you wanted to create a new chain, we can right click here, select create chain. And now we have two chains to work with. Now we can create a different effect in the second chain. Now we have two chains doing processing at the same time. So now our effect looks like this. We have a blue row and a red column above it. This is handy to use when you're making complex effects. For example, when you want to create an effect that has multiple different colors or multiple different shapes, but it'll mainly be used to separate two different effects onto two different regions of the launch pad. This here little section is called the key zone. This key zone specifies the range that this chain will affect. Your inputs are only gonna be sent to that chain if the key matches the zone you've selected. You can see which keys you're pressing by looking up on the keyboard. So now I'm going to mute the slower chain so I can work on the top one. So now pressing the button only sends my signal to the upper chain. So I want this red colored effect to span only on the left hand side of my launch pad. To do this, you want to properly select the zone of inputs you want to process. If I wanted this effect to happen only when I press this button, now I have to shorten this range to only affect the C1 key. And now it's only going to affect the C1 key and no other keys. Notice how this little indicator doesn't light up when I press a different button now. Similarly, you can select a whole range of buttons just by extending it like this. Now I can't affect the chain with these upper buttons. However, doing this with the mouse can sometimes be tedious. So you can just hold the button you want and then double click on the key zone. This will automatically snap it to whatever you're holding on the launch pad. If I wanted this zone to be affected, I can just press the lower and the upper boundary of the zone, double click the zone indicator, and now I can only affect that range. Now we can similarly constrain the bottom chain to the right hand side of the launch pad. We can just select this here segment of buttons, double click the zone indicator, and now we only have the blue effect on the right side and the red effect on the left side. Now we can make another chain with another new effect. You select the button you want to map this effect to, and then you can go ahead and build your effect. I've created this column of buttons. And now I can additionally create a row of buttons here by simply utilizing grouping inside of this chain that's already in a group. To do that, I will group my current effect and I will just create a new chain here. Now that I've created that part of the chain, now I have a nice plus symbol displaying. And now I can apply a velocity effect to this entire group to give everything a fixed color. I still have the original red and blue effects mapped on the sides though. You can additionally use velocity zones to filter out any signals that have a specific color. So after our original light effect chain, I will create a new chain that filters by velocity. And I'm only going to look at effects that have the velocity 45. This is our blue effect. We have just a single chain that only lets 45 pass the other effects even though they're actually being processed, as we can see on this indicator here, they're not actually coming through because there's no chain that would let them through over to the end of the track. So for that purpose, I can just create a small empty chain here, which will just let the other effects pass. And now I can additionally add any kind of effect to any blue effect from the previous group. Grouping is the technique you're gonna be using most for your launchpad covers, and it's really important that you practice doing it a lot so you can properly utilize it to its full potential. Grouping is something that you can only really fully understand with practice and recognizing common patterns in your chains. But in the future, I'm gonna be showing you some common methods that utilize grouping and allow you to achieve a desired result much easier than you would normally achieve it. 
There's not much more to say about grouping in general, and that's why this episode was really short, but I wanted to make a dedicated episode for it just because I feel it is really important to learn. I hope this tutorial helps you with some grouping basics. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, bye!